Kelly, you know what? I've been thinking about adopting a puppy. That is an excellent idea. Unfortunately, I have one that is a little too much of a handful already. But if, if not, I would totally be with you, Lisa. <laughs> you know, and that's kind of why I wanted to get our guests on today. Uh, I have some specific questions, but you know what? First, yes. why don't you tell the folks what's coming up on today's Boating Broadcast? Okay, well, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Boating Broadcast with Marine Max. Uh, today, we are going to be talking Ocean Alexander launching a pocket super yacht. I love utilizing Ooh. that term, pocket super yacht. Uh, the St. Pete Power and Sailboat Boat Show is a go. Wow. That, that turned around, that changed quickly. So uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And a look at the all new MJM Yachts 3Z or 3Z, depending on where you are in the <laughs> world. We also have uh, our special guest in talking about all things pets, uh, Taylor Gilmore, Director of Development and Communications for the Humane Society of Treasure Coast, uh, who have been partnering with Marine Max Stewart for, what is it, a big woofer event? I think they're calling a it. Big, big woofer woofer event. event. <laughs> And of course, landing with our social media, talking uh, animals yet again uh, with the beauty and the beast, which I'm wondering Ooh. what that means. Maybe a cute animal and maybe one that's a little bit scary. Scarier. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast with Marine Max, bringing you the latest news and notes in the world of boats. Welcome everyone to From the Helm Boating Broadcast. We're your hosts. I am Lisa and that guy right over there. He's Kelly. Say what's up. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Good afternoon. Please interact with us in the comment section and share this with your friends and family. For our audio listeners only, thank you so much for joining us. If you would like to see what you're hearing, follow us on uh, Facebook or YouTube, or mm -hmm. you can access us via the Marine Max app or the Marine Max website underneath the Lifestyles blog section. Yep. You can see all previous episodes of Boating Broadcast and our sister podcast, Boating Tips Live. Lots of good stuff there. All right, Kelly. Let's jump into some headlines. Headlines. Yes. Let's <laughs> kick it off. Up, and this is an exciting one, too. This is an exciting one. So Ocean Alexander launches a pocket super yacht. Uh, this was in Power and Motor Yacht uh, Magazine Online. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's pretty cool. So this is the Ocean Alexander 27 Explorer. Uh, they have uh, a, kind of a, a new line, it seems. Uh, and... Uh, in this case, a 27, which, what is that, about 80-something feet, I'm guessing? I'm sorry, I'm getting better at the meters. Feet, six inches. Wow. Um, yeah. So this is marking the debut of a new series. Tri this Tri-Deck motor yacht is designed to connect the whole family to the water. So Tri-Deck, which is a pretty amazing for an 80-something foot boat. And, uh, yeah, just a beautiful boat. You can you can definitely see that Evan K. Marshall design kind of uh, branching right. out into all the areas of Ocean Alexander, certainly. Yeah, it officially launched at the 2024 Lauderdale International Boat Show, uh, the first model in Ocean Alexander's new Explorer series. So P Power and Motor Yacht did a nice write-up on uh, this Tri-Deck Motor Yacht. It's very beautiful, um, almost 89 feet in length, a mm -hmm. ton of space, just, just beautiful. I mean, that traditional Ocean Alexander luxurious look, right? Oh, yeah. It's just a beautiful boat. And yeah. Um... It's kind of cool because so now they have the 27R series, which is mm -hmm. the Revolution, and now the 27E, which is the Explorer. Uh, makes me wonder, and you can certainly check out the entire uh, you know Power Motor Yacht uh, uh, content here and uh, write up where they talk about it. But maybe it's a little bit more adventurous than the Revolution. Maybe uh, you know it's maybe I'm I don't know. I'd have to look a little bit more into it. But no matter what, it's a tri deck, and you have a ton mm -hmm. of space. No matter where you go here. Um, and up top there, I think that's a good place to just hang out and relax with a cocktail at the end of the day. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to agree with you 100% there. And I think it's the, the 27 E for Explorer made for exploring, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. for sure. And Evan K. Marshall is just such a, a cool guy. It's just, a, it's great that we had an opportunity to meet him a few times and mm -hmm. kind of pick his brain about, you know, how he goes to the design process and, and again, you can certainly, uh, you know, see more about this boat uh, just by uh, checking out this uh, this article here in Power and Motor Yacht. Hey, Chuck Cashman even has a shout out in this article too here. So uh, Chuck states, the boat showed amazingly well and was well received by interested clients, uh, says Chuck Cashman. Modern design, but not too edgy in great social spaces were the underlying strengths. Typical to OA. The boat also has great sea keeping ability. So I'm guessing that's where that Explorer name comes in for sure, too. There you go. 
There you go. Well, if you're interested in learning more or reading the full article, you can find it on Power and Motor Yacht. Or uh, if you find us on, um, sorry, I thought I thought we just lost it. Nope, <laughs> if you find us here. on um, on the Marine Max website underneath the Lifestyles blog section, uh, we'll link to everything in this episode in the film notes down at the bottom, so you can find more information about everything we talk about here today. Yes. Awesome. So and, you're, uh, you're just looking a little bit more in depth of the 2070. I see what's happening here. Yeah, I brought it up because uh, I think, you know, a lot of times people want to see these stats and, um, you know, the two dual 1650 horsepower man powered Ooh. V12s. That is incredible. Yes. Incredible cool. power for an incredible uh, pocket super yacht. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, let's um, move right yeah. along here. Absolutely. So, uh, good news. The St. Pete power and sailboat show is a go. So this is yeah. one of the first boat shows that I know Marine Max is participating in, um, mm -hmm. in 2021. So this is all good stuff. Uh, the show runs from Thursday, January, January 14th through Sunday, January 17th, uh, down by the St. Pete municipal Marina and Albert worded park, beautiful area down there. Uh, mm -hmm. we'll see what it looks like. I would imagine, uh, they they go for their their standard show layout. Um, it's yeah. it's usually a great show, uh, beautiful location. Hopefully the weather is is warm and and gorgeous as well. Sure. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, every state has a little bit different uh, approach to COVID, and uh, obviously Florida is a little bit more open than some of the other states. So they're going ahead and having the show uh, five days from now. Well, I guess uh, depending on this when weekend. you're seeing this, but. Yeah, yeah, it'll be this weekend. Be this weekend. So. Um, so, but it's if, yeah. If you want your tickets, you can certainly get them on their website. Um, you can get that all weekend long. Uh, face masks are required, mm -hmm. uh, so they are uh, working with the CDC guidelines or the um, the you know all all the guidelines for the state. Um, but yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting to be there. Yeah. So if you read a little bit more, uh, show organizer Informa Markets collaborated with partners and authorities to develop the all secure health and safety standards. Uh, it's an industry wide protocol that raises the bar on safe, hygien hygienic, productive and high for high quality event experiences. So Informa mm -hmm. produces a lot of different boat shows and um, you're going to you saw it at, at the Fort Lauderdale show. Now you're seeing it here in the St. Pete area. Um, so mm -hmm. all events will run in accordance with the official, official government and local authority guidance as well. So they're not just being willy nilly, like Kelly said, master required and show organizers mm -hmm. really do want you to purchase your tickets ahead of time. One to cut down on, on human to human contact. And then two also to let the show plan about like how many people are going to be there. So they, they want to be yeah. able to, to be prepared and know in advance uh, to expect what kind of crowd. So get online, purchase your uh, tickets if you plan to go to the St. Pete show. I know that they would love mm -hmm. to have you. It's a great outdoor open air event. Um, and I there's a lot of space. You can definitely uh, social distance, no problem in that area. Oh, for sure. So yeah, be sure to check it out. Uh, always a great place, great location, St. Petersburg. Uh, and of course, Marie Max, no matter what, if uh, you decide, uh, you know, I'd like to check out some stuff online too. We always have a, a boat show going on at any of our Marie Max stores, or of course, on, on our website at marinemax.com. Very true. Very true. Another boat you can check out on marinemax.com is the new MJM Yachts 3Z, or Z, as Kelly mentioned earlier. <laughs> I just uh, like to say it. I sound more cultured, you know. <laughs> you you are very cultured, Kelly. Uh, I think it's a Canadian thing, though, actually, too. I think they say it up there, so who knows? Eh? All right. This article is by Yachting Magazine. It's a great review about the, the 3Z, which is just a beautiful yacht, right? MJM, yep. uh, I think their lines... And uh, everything about them just gives me a little bit of an old school feel with new school technology and touches. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially you looking at that picture right there, you got, you know, the MJM, which is kind of a, a how would you call it? Vintage looking almost or something. That, very classic. Yes. Yeah. Classic. I like that. Uh, but then you got the, those brand new Mer Mercury Verado outboards on the mm -hmm. back. So it kind of adds that class plus that innovation at the same time. So it's such a cool looking boat. Very that. cool looking boat. So standard power on this baby is twin 300, uh, Mercury 300 outboards, like we saw mm -hmm. in that image there. And they report a top at top end speed of about 43.4 knots and yep. a cruise speed around 33 knots. 
Okay. So yeah, you can definitely get up and go. Um, the construction is also epoxy infused cord composite, mm -hmm. uh, making it lightweight and uh, I'm guessing extremely rigid and uh, ready for the water. That's uh, everything you'd want in a boat, right? It is. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and of course, not only does it go, it's just uh, something that you don't see too often on the waterways too. So it's uh, it's kind of a unique, it's almost like seeing a Rolls Royce drive by or something, you know? Yeah. It really is. Yeah, definitely unique, Blair. Nice comparison there, Kelly. I like that. Yeah, right. you don't see it too often. It's classy. And every time you see one, you're like, wow. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Everybody take a look at the MJM3Z uh, on yachtingmagazine.com or yep. on marinemax.com. We uh, we'll have information there, too. Um, and now let's get into our guest interview. Please welcome to the program, Taylor Gilmore, Director of Development and Communications for the Humane Society of Treasure Coast, who has partnered with Marine Max Stewart for a Big Woofer Weekend, which we'll get into <laughs> later. Love welcome that. to the program, Taylor. Welcome. Hello. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, we appreciate well, your time, yeah, of course. Absolutely. And uh, so, that is an amazing name, by the way, Big Woofer Weekend, so I can't wait to discuss. <laughs> oh, all right, but first let's get into who you are and who you work for. Tell us a little bit more about the Humane Society of Treasure Coast. Of course. So we were founded in 1955. We are Martin County's only open access, um, no kill animal shelter, um, serving all of the animals in the area. Um, we are so much more than just a shelter. Mm -hmm. We provide an array of services from adoption and fostering to humane education, um, pet therapy. Um, we're really out and about in the community, and it's our goal to be the primary resource for pet owners in Martin County. Awesome. Oh, excellent. All right. So I am addicted to the dodo on Instagram. I don't know if you're familiar, but they yep. do these great stories about like you know, finding uh, pets who have been abandoned or are in broken down buildings, and then uh, some type of shelter will take them in, rehabilitate them, and put them up into a foster home and then get them adopted. And these beautiful stories, they always end up happy. So I I would love to be a part of that. So let's start by talking about the volunteer, or maybe let's the adoption process first. Let's go about, sure. so how does that work if I wanted to go through an adoption through your company? Sure. So we adopt out over 2,500 animals each year. So obviously that's oh my gosh. what we do. And um, Lisa, we do get a lot of, like you were talking about with those stories, um, a, real, a lot of heartfelt, very sad situations that we see. Um, and so we're grateful that we have a well-funded um, clinic at the shelter that we're able to take care of those animals and, and often rehabilitate them and to get them into loving homes. So if you are interested in adopting, things are a little bit different because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, but fortunately, we do have a pet database on our website. So if you want to um, go to our website at hstc1.org yep. and click adopt, you can see um, we have a pet database right there on that page um, where you can search for any animals that you might be interested in. Um, if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see the pet online pet search tool. Um, so click on that. <laughs> I know there's the animals. Sorry. So I laugh when I see cats. I don't know. It's just. They're so cute. They're so cute. <laughs> oh, you can't help it. I get it. Um, so anyway, so you can see what kind of animal that you might be interested in. Once mm -hmm. you know that there's an animal that you want to meet, you can call our shelter and schedule an appointment. Because of COVID, we are open um, to visitors by appointment only. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So you can call our shelter at 772 -8 Eight two 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 eight eight. Sorry. Nice. <laughs> eight eight two 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 three eight eight two two. I'm so sorry. Um, oh, <laughs> check out the um, website, yeah. of course, hstc1.org. If you're interested in learning more, or of course, the most exciting part is finding your next pet under the pet search, which is. <laughs> Anytime I see a search of any kind is fun because it's like cars or anything, but pets especially, you can find your next pet right on there. Oh, fun. So you can filter if you're looking for like a dog or a cat or like a specific type of animal, you can filter by that. But or you can just see all of the adoptable pets that we have available. And it is updated in real time. So that is like the most efficient way if you mm -hmm. have your mm -hmm. certain 
type of animal, or maybe you live in a community where um, you are only able to have an animal up to a certain weight. Um, so you can definitely keep perusing that, call our shelter, make an appointment, come in, see the animal in person, um, and then you can complete, complete the adoption process right there that day. Um, so it's super quick. We try to get people in and out quickly. We try to get the animals into loving homes quickly, although yeah. our best to provide a loving, safe, and healthy environment, um, there really is no place like home. So we want to mm. help meet that as quickly as possible. Now, you mentioned cats and dogs. Is it only cats and dogs or... No, oh, so we have <laughs> cats, dogs, and rabbits are like our big three. Rabbits, okay. Shocked at the um, variety of animals that we get. So as I mentioned before, um, our shelter is open access, which means that we accept all animals from our county residents, like all domestic pets. So um, you might okay. think we're kind of similar to like what you might think of like as like a city pound. Um, we are a nonprofit and independent of the county, but we do provide that service. So we get like all sorts of pets from people for like ferrets and chinchillas and <laughs> bearded dragons times. And we've- Awesome. Oh my gosh. Large pigs. So there's always, always <laughs> an interesting um, pet with us. Um, Man. But- yeah, dogs, cats, and rabbits are our big three. Well, we have Landon behind the scenes right now who I'm sure would be extremely excited to discuss all these things with you because he's quite passionate about uh, animals as well, uh, our social media guru. Um, but also, so what is, and I'm just kind of off on a tangent here because it's very interesting to me, what is the most interesting animal that you've seen that's been adopted uh, out there? Um, I mean, you said you got some bearded dragons. I mean... I mean, he just threw out a pig, man. That would be pig, cool. Like 300 pound pig named Tulip. I mean, Tulip. Probably oh. that. Um, sweet old Tulip. Um, so someone also oh. managed to like domesticate this like huge iguana that was like found in a tree. And that was, yes. So we were, that was an interesting experience because we do not typically, um, the essential care items to sure it. right an iguana that large um but it was it was really interesting to see and um what's really cool so i'm you know i'm with like the management team and um i don't really get to deal with the animals every day but it's mm -hmm. iron to see our animal care team they are just so passionate and committed and regardless of the pet or the animal they always provide the same level of love and care um to everyone and to all so it's really cool to see and i see here oh, too excellent. uh it says three thousand animals being rehomed annually which is incredible to think about i mean three thousand every year are going to new homes huh that's uh, that's great yeah it's really something um and you know we serve over uh six thousand total through all of our um programs and services so um three thousand through adoptions and then um over six thousand through all of our services. wow it's a big impact we are small but mighty yes no that's excellent so uh, let's let's get talking about some of these services that you provide obviously the pet adoption is is what everybody knows the Humane Society for, but there's also the volunteering. I think that'd probably be the second thing people think about when they think about the Humane Society is the option for volunteering. Mm -hmm. So for someone like myself, like I don't have any pets. I had a cat growing up. Can I just walk in and, and volunteer and help you guys out? How does that all work? So we have an online application form. Of course. You're welcome to volunteer. Um, in fact, we really depend on it. We have over 500 active volunteers each year that um, donate over 30,000 hours of their time. Wow. And we, as like as a small nonprofit, we really depend on that help to, for us to be able to continue our mission um, and our work in the community. So you can just go on our website right here. Mm -hmm one.org forward slash volunteer. Um, if you scroll down, you can see that there are so many different ways you can volunteer, so many different um, departments and programs. We want um, our volunteers to feel confident and excited about how they're supporting us. So we um, try to explain, you can see that very lengthy list, um, mm -hmm. all the different ways so that people can can kind of choose how they want to be involved. But my favorite is um, we have uh, 
like dog cuddlers that will go in each of the, I know, out of you. <laughs> and for our cats and we have funny groomers. Um, so there's something for everyone. If you want to help out at our events, if you want to be on our gala committee, which is our premier largest fundraiser of the year, you can help and volunteer in that way. If you want to get in there with our pets, um, mm-hmm. Bunny groomers, which are really important, dog walkers, the dog cuddlers that I said, um, cat care volunteers. I know right now our volunteer manager really needs more cat care volunteers and volunteers actually to help us with our public spay neuter program. Mm. Yeah. So not actually doing medical care. <laughs> sure. <laughs> not the actual medical treatment. Um, but so there's a lot of ways to get involved. So if you're interested, go to this website take a look at all the options, complete the form. We are doing um, brief 45 minute orientations all by Zoom right now because of COVID. Um, Mm -hmm. We're trying to streamline everything as much as we can. So it's a pretty simple process. Very cool. Excellent. Well, sign me up for uh, dog cuddling because that sounds fantastic. (laughs) Well, and as I was going through this list too, I think sign me up for critter care. That sounds pretty awesome. And uh, (laughs) I'm sure Landon would also, my, both myself and Landon would be in, interested in shelter pet photography and wrangling. It's not just pet photography, it's in <laughs> wrangling. Or in peace to the photography puzzles. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's too I cute. get interesting visuals of like wrangling, you know, the animals and stuff like that. And well, that's pretty cool. Great, the types of uh, looks we can get the animals to do when we take their pictures. If they're really treat motivated, we can get them yep. jumping up and all sorts of cute things. So. I'll get you so, guys. Random story, but one of uh, my other coworkers got me hooked up with a, a vet in the past to do pet photography for the holidays. And there was a Santa that would be holding puppies and then I would take their pictures. So that was a very <laughs> interesting. And uh, you totally, when I'm looking at this list, I'm like, I have experience. I think I could somehow volunteer uh, <laughs> as that pet photographer and wranglers because it, a big part of that is to like get them to look at the camera right so sound like the perfect candidate for it. i think we're gonna have to sign you up immediately thank all you all right <laughs> well i think we know virtual zoom you know interviews and stuff like that we could probably figure something out here so awesome <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Another uh piece that i've always been interested in is that fostering process mm-hmm. so how does someone go about becoming a foster Oh, so we have a <laughs> form you can fill out. And those are, of course, that's, um, our fosters are such an important part of our team. Um, they often go kind of, um, well, like they're not here at the shelter every day. You know, they're not like their other volunteers, but they are so important. And we have fosters who are constantly fostering for us all throughout the year. Um, so we definitely are so appreciative of them. Um, So you can go to our website again, hstc1.org forward slash foster. And there's a quick little form that you can fill out for our foster manager to contact you. Um, And then honestly, it's whatever you feel comfortable with, we can set you up with that type. So we um, obviously kittens and puppies, newborns, they need to be fostered before they're available or ready for adoption. Um, So when we get um, any sort of pregnancy and births in the shelter, we'll need fosters for that. Um, Sometimes that includes bottle feeding. Um, So Mm. really cute, I know. Um, And then also we have like medical um, needs that require animals to be fostered and in a home setting while they recover and get treatment. Um, and that, you know, might range, um, from illnesses or, um, injuries and that kind of thing. And then kind of sometimes the more extreme cases or we need are that we need, um, you know, behavior plans and we need fosters to help with that. Um, sometimes these animals Mm -hmm. are really unloving, horrendous and devastating, um, situations and they, just aren't yet ready to open up to a new mm-hmm. family. So we really want to work with them. And and in those situations, those fosters work very closely with our um, trainer, our behavior trainer on staff to, to help. So it's really whatever fosters are, um, are capable of with their own experiences and with their own lifestyle. Um, we want to, you know, make it work for everyone. So if they just like I said, hop on the website. You can fill out a form. Um, any questions that you might have, you can review review them with our um, foster manager, and then they can get you set up. 
That's on my to-do list for 2021. I, I've always wanted to experience this whole foster. I, I, although I really do think I would be a foster fail because I've not done it before. I think the first one would be like, nope, cannot give this pet up. I was definitely a foster failure. So we have, <laughs> so embarrassing. So we have a, a rule if you are on our staff, like if you're an employee of the society that we don't let you like foster or adopt like for the first few months because it's kind of like compassion overload. Like mm -hmm. you see all of these animals and they're all like just so wonderful in their own ways and with their own stories and you just kind of want to take them all home. And so uh, I was here for a few months and so I thought that I kind of got that in my system. And then Christmas happened and there was a stray dog that came in and she was pregnant and she had her litter at our shelter. She's a litter of 10 and they were like all different dogs like they were so different from one another but there was this one like chunky little butterball of a puppy <laughs> it was like i'm taking that dog home with me <laughs> like got permission and i fostered this dog and I was only supposed to have her for two weeks and I refused. And they were like, oh, it's great. You get to name her. Like, you, I'm like, oh, no, wow. no, I was like, I can't name this dog because I'm supposed to give it back. So I only called her puppy and I loved puppy pretty much, but I refused to name her. And I don't know if you guys had heard, but there was actually um, a parvovirus outbreak in Martin County um, just a, two years ago. And so because we have so much in and out from the Mm -hmm. shelter we didn't know um you know if if our grounds had been exposed you know and, and that's very it's a very life-threatening um disease for puppies and older dogs so we were all told as fosters that we had to keep our foster pups even longer and <laughs> it was downhill from there <laughs> <laughs> named her and I just looked at her little face and I was like no nope, we belong together and she just turned two in December uh, congratulations. Thank you. And I'm still obsessed with her and she's wonderful. So I encourage everyone to be a foster and a foster failure. It's great. <laughs> so Lisa. Now, so do, do you only have the one still? Well, I already had a cat who was very okay that I fostered this dog to begin with. So um, I have a cat and a dog and I think that that's just how it's going to be for a while. <laughs> nice. Good. Well, Lisa, no. what do you think? Yeah. You gonna do it? Uh, do you think you would get suckered in and be like, you know, oh, just for a couple of weeks or a month or something like that? And Not then... suckered in. Like, I would totally <laughs> volunteer for it too. I mean, suckered I volunteer in, like, with it, for that like you just anguish. Fall for the, the pup or the the cat, and it's game oh, over. Of course. <laughs> but it's okay because I have uh, the Humane Society of Treasure Coast to help me with the rest of the stuff. Because not only do you do the adoptions, mm -hmm. the 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 fostering, the volunteer work. But you have a laundry list of services that you offer through your location, obedience training, spay neuter, disaster preparedness, yeah. humane education. Um, there's some stuff on here that I don't even know. Uh, what what do you get? The, what's the most popular service that you provide? Oh, my goodness. Um, definitely our public spay neuter, mm -hmm. our obedience and agility training. So we offer the largest um, of low cost, affordable public spay neut neuter program in mm -hmm. the region. We have people drive up from as like far south as like Boca and Boynton um, to as far as um, Indian River County um, because of the affordable rates that we are able to offer because um, of our community financial support. So um, mm -hmm. that we are so committed to, not only do we want to find homes for all of these animals, but we want to also encourage and promote responsible pet ownership. And that means getting your pets spayed and neutered um, so that we don't have continued homeless pets. Yep. Right. That's something we're really proud of. Um, again, you can go on. I think that you're on that page right now. Mm -hmm. um, HSTC1.org forward slash public offers um, not just all of the information on public spay neuter, but also the all of the other um, little programs and services that we offer um, pet owners, whether you get your pet from us or elsewhere. Um, we want to be a yeah. great resource for pet owners in our community. And so... Um, you can find all those those goodies there. And then another big one, like I mentioned before, is our um, our training. We offer 
so many classes. I think that it's, yeah, up there on obedience training. If you click on that, just to give like a little taste of all of the, no, what a cutie, right? (laughs) Yes. Oh, so good. If you just scroll down that page, you can see, um, a list of the various classes that we offer throughout the year. And again, this is available for, um, for the entire community, whether you adopted from us or not, again, Mm -hmm. um, we offer puppy classes, um, like that puppy star class that you're on right now. Um, that's kind of like a little, um, a pre-class to our obedience class, which obviously Mm -hmm. have obedience basic obedience and advanced obedience. Um, but we also, if you just keep scrolling, we offer so many classes, um, and sports, um, for the community. We also train, which is really interesting and kind of gets into another program, but one of the classes on here is also pet therapy certification. So you can actually get your dog certified to be a pet therapy dog, which is wonderful. Offer pet therapy to, other organizations throughout the community. It's a service that we provide. Um, wow. Actually, so pause to read. Like you just clicked on, that is a national award-winning literacy program that we offer to schools and after-school programs throughout Martin and St. Lucie County um, to help children improve their um, reading skills. So studies show that um, dogs, that children who read to dogs, it increases it down. It like helps them get over their nerves and then to kind of just free their minds and practice their reading and it increases their confidence, which then helps them want to practice more. And then it increase, increases um, their their scores and mm-hmm. their skill. Level. It's been really incredible. Um, we're in the Boys and Girls Club a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. It's like, it's so cool to see. It's really cool. Cuteness overload. Kids reading to dog puppies. Are you kidding like me? The, it's really cool. It's the coolest thing. It'd be one of my favorite programs. But we're also in um, we're in the school system to help with um, ESC students as well, and um, in hospitals and rehabilitation centers um, and other senior living centers. Um, so we provide an array, and that's all just for pet therapy. Yeah. Um, we're really out there. Right. Like I said before, we really are more than a shelter um, here at the Humane Society, even though we're just a little Palm City organization. We're trying to do a great deal for our community and for our region. No, and you're doing an excellent job. We could probably talk forever about all the programs you offer, just stories of of things. Um, But so the reason that we are speaking to you today is because you partnered with Marine Max Stewart Mm -hmm. for a big woofer weekend. Uh, yeah. Which is an opportunity to for people to see boats and and puppies. I don't know what to. I mean, it's a beautiful combination. <laughs> Best of both worlds. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell us a little bit about uh, the uh, this upcoming weekend. Absolutely. So, it is in conjunction with the Stuart Boat Show, and so on the sixteenth on Saturday, um, we will be bringing out some of our adoptable dogs to Marine Max. Yay. Um, from 10 to 12. So you can see the boats, you can see the adoptable dogs, you can actually um, adopt a dog that's there. Um, and then also we'll just have some some HSTC staff and volunteers and some literature. So you can just learn more about what we're all about and hang out with the dogs. It's going to be a really good time. So don't miss it. No, that sounds like an excellent time. Yeah. So obviously there we can adopt a dog, but if somebody wanted to talk to you more about maybe bringing in a pet therapy program to their you you know, educational program or maybe nursing home. Is that something that that you guys would be open to discussing as well? Oh, absolutely. I mean, obviously everything is um with with pet therapy specifically is a little bit um mm-hmm. just because of COVID, we're just kind of like unsure of how to move mm-hmm. forward. But we're always open to um expanding our reach. So if you want to talk about pet therapy or training or anything else that we can help you or, you know, your part of our community with, let us know. And we'd be happy to have those conversations. Wow. Excellent thing. So how long have you been with uh, the Humane Society? I've been with the Humane Society for a little shy of three years. Um, okay. And an incredible, incredible journey. I've been with some other nonprofits in the past, and this is definitely um, the best. <laughs> 
That's all. all right, three years, two pets. I think you're doing okay. Uh, I know. <laughs> it breaks on that for a little bit, but. <laughs> Um, and I also, uh, you guys are on Instagram too. So, um, as you guys were chatting a little bit about that, I was checking out some cool pics on, on the Instagram page. Uh, it looks like you had some cool stuff going for the 12 strays of Christmas, of course. Uh, oh. oh, that was so wonderful. So those, we did our, love Shiva's still here. Little Shiva so sweet. Um, <laughs> sorry, I love that face. Oh. Yeah. That's a good Aww. smile right there. She always likes this like that. Um, yeah, so for the 12 strays of Christmas, we featured our 12 longest residents. Um, so you can see red block, it shows in days, um, hundreds of days that they've been in our shelter. And so just a little extra promotion to try to, to try to find homes for them for the holidays. And some of them were adopted, but several of them are still here. So mm -hmm. go to the online pet search tool on our website and learn more about our adoption so we can get them out of here and into their forever homes. Lisa, Aww. what do you think? So I know. <laughs> there's Mr. Krabs. He looks pretty awesome. Um, no, do not let the name fool you. He's <laughs> a little social gem. He's just a little cuddler. Oh, that's so adorable. Yeah, cranberry. So with, with COVID, I know a lot of things, a lot of things skyrocketed. Boat sales skyrocketed, RVs, people bought bikes, kayaks, things that they could do while social di distance. I heard that even adoption skyrocketed a little bit. Did you guys feel that in your area? So definitely the first um, few months, last spring, the first few months of COVID, our foster and adoption monthly rates like quadrupled in like those first couple of months, which was amazing and so helpful for us um, as an mm -hmm. business, as we were trying to figure out how to adjust to these health and safety concerns. Um, obviously our, you know, animals don't know that there's a virus going on and they still need care um, every single day. So um, it was so amazing that our community stepped up in that way to mm -hmm. help. We had so many adoptions, so many fosters, and so many people actually joined as volunteers and fosters and have, because of COVID, and have continued to, to volunteer and work with us in that way because of that. So we're super grateful. Well, that's excellent. It's nice to hear something good coming out of a, a, a global pandemic. So absolutely, we need all the good news that we can get. And um, we're so grateful that our communities continue to step up for us for the animals during this time. For sure. Excellent. All right. So Kelly, what was their uh, Instagram handle? So uh, it was uh, HSTC adopt. So Instagram.com, which you'll rarely go on your computer, but if you do <laughs> Instagram.com slash HTC adopt, or of course on Instagram at HTS HSTC adopt. And you can find right. all the cool 12 strays of Christmas. I'm sure there's still maybe a few available. I'm sure they, they went pretty quick after all those posts. And of course, um, just some really good stuff, you know, really good information about, you know, everything that, that takes place and, and all the great things that you guys offer. So really cool. Thank you. Yeah. And it's always, it's always nice to see something positive yeah. on social media, whether it's a cute puppy face or a cute kitty face or a cute piggy face. You know, it, it just makes, brings a smile to my face. <laughs> so if you're interested in any more information, you could Google um, Humane Society, Treasure Coast. They'll come up mm -hmm. wherever wherever you're looking for information, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. They even have a YouTube channel. Yep. Uh, and of course, their website for all of the searches and all the forms if you want to adopt or volunteer. All right, Taylor, did we miss anything? Is there anything else we need to talk about today to make sure we cover? No, I mean, we covered a lot. Obviously, there's always so much more to uncover with the Humane Society, the Treasure Coast. So just, just to echo you, visit our website, learn more. If you have any questions, there's countless contact emails all over there. You can reach us, and we're always happy to answer any questions and um, just talk about the animals. Hey, thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Taylor. We really appreciate it. And uh, as you can hear, uh, he wasn't from uh, Humane Society of Treasure Coast, but my dog is also barking in the background, just uh, blowing the interview. <laughs> he sounds like he wants to get in on the fun. Oh, yeah. He hears the animals. We're talking about the animals, and he's like, I want to meet them all. So maybe you need them too. I don't <laughs> Yes, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> 
Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Taylor, for joining us. Uh, if anybody's out in the Stewart area, be sure to stop by Marine Max Stewart on Saturday for Big Woo for Weekend. Check out some boats, check out some puppies, talk to, to Taylor and her representatives there and learn more about what you can do uh, to either foster, uh, adopt, or volunteer with the Humane Society. Yep. Great. Oh. All right. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Thank you, Taylor. Okay. <sighs> well, there was so many puns in that conversation that I don't even think you picked up on that you you stated there is positive and uh, and I know only only know that because on their website there's many things that said you know a, a positive something something and uh, so <laughs> really cool but that was a, yeah I mean anytime uh, you get the opportunity to volunteer or work with a humane society or uh, anything that's uh, assisting some animals that might might not have it as good as good old spiffy there who's barking in the background uh you know that, that's great so especially and it's kind of perfect yeah and it's great that marine max uh, of of uh stewart are, are kind of teaming up with them i think that that's really cool very cool very cool yep uh they definitely br definitely bring a smile to to your face uh pets any pets yes that's why we have them right uh speaking of pets and animals uh where's landon <laughs> <laughs> i think i was kind of thinking like <laughs> Landon almost needed to be in on that conversation just because he has the knowledge. Uh, he has the passion. What do you think, think, Landon? I think you guys give me, I have the passion, but you give me too much credit if you say that I have the knowledge because <laughs> I, half the time I, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I do, I do love animals and pets. And uh, I was right there with you, Lisa. If, if I was to try to foster any of those, I, you know, your heart just kind of hurts and wants to keep it forever, you know, and you fall yeah. in love, but but it's a great program. It sounds like they really got it going on over there. And I think it's exciting all the different opportunities they provide for pet owners. Yeah. That, Absolutely. That's a great promotion too, especially that that 12 strays of Christmas. Basically, you know, if there are animals uh, that are have been there a little longer than you'd expect, uh, it gives, you know, people an opportunity to just highlight those animals and uh, the power of social media lets somebody uh, just, you know, be, be, at love at first sight and, and go and pick pick up uh what was it cranberry was one of the, the cats mr crab, <laughs> mr. crab. <laughs> well perfect segue kelly because we are talking about the power of social media as well as showing off something very adorable this segment we're going to call beauty and the beast we're going to start with the beauty the cute yep. adorable kelly i'd like you to to pop up this first video and uh let's take a look yeah, and before I bring it in, I just had to say I was telling Landon uh, earlier. He he said before I put it in here, he's like, "Don't watch the videos." And as mm -hmm. I was putting the videos in, I was like, "He he said that I I, I have to." It's kind of like you know, <laughs> I had to at that point. Telling, so I telling a child not to do something that though they're definitely gonna then do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's okay. I still have it. You're gonna love it. So here we go. Here, let me bring it full screen. Bear. <laughs> Honestly, I love this video. This is so adorable. I love koala bears. So for our listeners, we are watching a video of a koala bear that is just sauntering along on the beach in Australia, actually. And there's three surfboards and he just kind of climbs right over him and continues on <laughs> on the beach. I, it's so cute. Aww. That is, uh, yeah. It's... It's just like your Uncle Pete just going for a stroll on the beach. He's just if, if your Uncle Pete is just like two no feet long you. and furry and, and adorable, then there you go. Yeah. Well, it's a weird thing. You rarely see koala just like walk, walking on the ground. It's always in a tree or eating what mm -hmm. eucalyptus or whatever. So seeing it like walking on the ground is very strange for some reason. And even in that last shot there, you could actually see it just sitting in the water. And I don't think I've frankly ever seen a video or a photo of a koala bear just this close to the ocean, just hanging out. And maybe if, if you're from Australia and you're a viewer, then you're kind of used to that thing. But um, I thought it was just really interesting. It's, it seems a little out of place, but he seems like he's fine. Just chilling, very comfortable around humans. Yeah. And just, <laughs> Of course, rebounding after the dreadful beginning of 2020, uh, you know, we have COVID and all that that we talked about. But at the beginning, we totally forget at the beginning of 2020, there was a terrible disaster in Australia with mm -hmm. the wildlife fires and and everything. So it's cool to see the koalas bouncing back and and hanging loose at the beach. Oh, look at him. He's just I know. 
<laughs> just with my peeps at the, at the beach. And all the people are watching him, and he's like, how dare you stare at me while I'm just taking my bath here in the ocean. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that look on his face. <laughs> so oh, I approve. I approve of this video, Landon. Good. Well I'm glad. I'm glad. And actually, there's a lot of tie-ins to actually the last week's episode because we showed a video of the whale surfing the waves. This little guy is climbing on some boards, and he he's ready to surf the waves. Um, but actually, if you crawl from last week, there was also a topic that we discussed that I promised I would discuss on this episode. And it was the question of you what's did. the difference between an alligator and a crocodile. So without telling you what it is, I want Kelly, if you can play the next video, and sure. I'd like Lisa to guess whether this is an alligator we're looking at or a crocodile. All right. Zoom me in. Zoom me in. Uh, holy smokes. <laughs> That's a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It certainly looks like a dinosaur. <laughs> so that is a crocodile because he has more of a pointier snout. Whoever is yeah, filming that yeah, needs to back is, up. I don't know. And you can actually. Yeah. Is it yeah, hissing? I don't know if you can hear and, that. And you can audio. actually hear her right there as she goes, I'm going to back up. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Probably smart. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, um, so too close to comfort. Yeah, smokes. again, for our audio only listeners, this is a very large beast that is in the swamplands. This is actually in the Everglades of Florida. Um, so, oh, Lisa, perfect. you thought it was a crocodile. It's actually an alligator. Um, so, this is perfect. This is exactly why I wanted to discuss what's the difference because it it seems like they're they're very close. Um, you know, yeah. and similarities. So basically the biggest differences between the two crocodiles exist in both freshwater and saltwater, but uh, alligators prefer freshwater. So if you're in kind of saltier okay. waters, it's probably going to be a crocodile, but an alligator can really just be in the freshwater. Um, alligators have shorter, rounder snouts while crocodiles have longer tapered snouts. And then of course you guys did mention crocodiles are a little bit meaner than yes. alligators so something gets water. to them i don't know what it is but man they're both scary and i'm staying away <laughs> because you can hear at the end of that video it's it's hissing like it's it's like a cat it's like a big scaly cat in the water yeah and i that, that's definitely when they no. when they do that that's kind of their oh, way of man. saying uh take, take a hike <laughs> get away <laughs> you're get in my here. territory now well they are deceivingly yeah. oh, yeah. fast you did that one video, Landon, of the mm -hmm. one in the water that was cruising along at we, you know, I think clocked maybe 15, 20 miles an 20. hour. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they they're very quick, especially when they're in water. They're able to use their tails to propel themselves forward. It's funny because we you like I think we even mentioned it last week. You see them on golf courses just kind of uh -huh. just kind of yep. chilling out there, but don't want to get close to that thing. It, it can have you ever seen them run? They can run. Can they run like pretty they quick? They just kind of lift, lift themselves up and. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> We're gonna have alligators. I mean, it's not super graceful, Olympics. but they move faster than you think that they're going to. Right, right. Which is ultra creepy. They're. I think they're fascinating. I really do. But they um, are. But in person, I've seen an alligator in person, and I wanted to stay in my canoe and not fall over because. Oh yeah, yeah. You don't want to mess yeah. around. Who knows the... what's underneath at that point? Let's see what. So yeah, I, I, had See, look look fast I had to look up an alligator running that we're Watch discussing this alligator burst of speed HD. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> no, well, you know, living in Florida, uh, no matter where you are, you're going to experience a, a alligator at some point, just seeing it, you know, uh, mm -hmm. hanging out and just no matter what, you know, just respect the, the distance and uh, make sure you just uh, keep away and they'll keep away and you'll you'll have a good time. So. Yeah, and I think that I think that applies to just in general when you're outside trying to experience wildlife do its thing. Just you know, let them do your their thing, and they'll let you do your thing. You know, whether it's manatee, you don't necessarily need to reach your hand down and start rubbing up on them and stuff. Who knows what that could do? So just enjoy them with your eyeballs from far away. <laughs> All right, yeah, Mom, you're thanks. welcome. I got you, kids. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you adopt yes. or foster and that or you know volunteer to be a puppy cuddler. There you go. Then hands on, I think, is is all good to go. So we'll we'll have to ask <laughs> if she's got alligating alligator cuddling on her list there, but you know, good good point, Lisa. 
You know, I wanted to ask her if <laughs> alligators had ever been, you know, rescued or anything like that. But I figure, you know, Florida, you probably, they're like, there you go, little guy. Get back in the water and you'll be okay. Someone yeah. somewhere right, has, has tried, I'm sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. Well, let's wrap All it right. up here, Kelly. Do you have any final thoughts for today? Uh, not really. Um, you know, it's uh, again, we're in 2021. Some big things happening. Uh, a lot of new boat models coming out. So stay tuned for some future episodes where we're going to be unveiling some all new models. We're really excited about yeah. that. And, uh, you know, thanks, Landon, for showing us some really cool uh, uh, content. As always, if you want to, you know, learn more and, and see uh, more social media from Remax, be sure to check out the YouTube channel. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, just plug, 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 get out there and check it out because we're always showing some cool boats and some, some cool things. Absolutely. All right, Landon, anything to add? No, that's perfect. I'm going to go cuddle my own cat now because I, <laughs> I'm feeling that. So, <laughs> well, thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, tune in next week. As Kelly said, we have some new boat models. We're going to be talking about very cool stuff. You won't want to miss that. And uh, if you would love to see what you're hearing, if you're on a podcast right now, check us out on the Marine Max app or the Marine Max website underneath the Lifestyles blog section. You can find more episodes of Boating Broadcast and also our sister podcast, Boating Tips Live, where we've got two captains <laughs> chatting back and forth, answering very popular boating questions. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed today's boating broadcast. As always, stay healthy and boat happy. We will see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of From the Helm Boating Broadcast. To keep up with the latest news and notes in the world of boats, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and wherever podcasts can be heard. Until next time, we'll see you out on the water.